You know, you just can't escape it. Shakespeare was right. There's only one question. To be or not to be. I am absolutely fascinated by the growing prominence of the singularity movement. If you haven't heard about these guys, and apparently they are mostly men, they argue that human technology is advancing exponentially. And in about 35 years, we will reach a point, known as the singularity, when artificial intelligence will surpass the collective processing power of all living humans. After that, you know the drill. We get Tron, we get Terminator, we get whatever science fiction scenario takes the day. And probably something far more complicated than that. Could we be the last crop of humans to experience cognitive superiority over the known universe? And if we are, can we handle it? I mean, let's be honest, there is comfort in blankets and paper and candles, hot tea in the winter and sandals in the summer. These are what we know, and they are good. Will the analog world really give birth to the cyborg masses? The story of life, so far at least, has been relatively straightforward. Three billion years, competing, failing, recovering, expanding, and diversifying. And now, suddenly, we're standing on the cusp of an unknowable future. Of course, the predictions could be wrong. They often are. But we should still face the question, to be or not to be? Well, that's easy, to be. I mean, come on, until now, we didn't have a choice. Here's the thing, if the singularity is real, and if it's true that we've already climbed the technology curves this far, it doesn't necessarily matter what we believe, what we argue, or even what we feel. The only real choice was made 5,200 years ago, the first time we ever started reaching for the stars. Those of us alive today are just hanging on for the ride. So buckle up, everybody. Here we go.